once again to our study of the hymnal in the home as we look at how to use this, the Lutheran service book, the hymnal of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, as a tool and a resource for home devotional use. Uh, the last couple of weeks we have talked about the various services in the church. We've talked about the divine service and then the daily prayer offices, the daily prayer services, such as matins, morning prayer, etc., that we can use as, uh, as home services, as home liturgies. Uh, but I, I want to call your attention today to the other tools that we have within this book that can help us to put together that service that we are going to use with our family. Uh, it's got some wonderful tools that I'll show you, the, the Psalms, other prayers that we can say, um, other ways that we can use this book to put together our service. The most important thing I want to say to you is be intentional about this. This is not going to come by accident. We are not going to accidentally do devotions more with our family. So be intentional about this. Uh, Henry David Thoreau uh, said something to the effect, and I don't remember the exact quote, but you know, he said, don't just be busy. Even the ants are busy. You don't want to be like an ant, right? He said, be intentional about what you are busy doing. What you are busy doing is going to shape who you are. Just being busy doesn't shape who we are. But what we are busy doing is what shapes us. And he was not saying this by any means as a pastor or as a devotional expert, but it certainly applies to what we are doing. It applies to how we are intentional in forming faith with our families, with our children, with our, with our whole household. And so this is what I want to instill with you and also with me. Uh, I am preaching to myself just as much as I am to you here, that uh, we all can be more intentional about what we are doing. And this kind of thing only comes by being intentional. This does not come by accident. And so with that kind of being said, let me give you a template for what this can look like in our daily family um, devotional services. First of all, uh, the first thing we want to pick is our service. Which daily office, daily prayer service are we going to use as our guide for how we do this with our family? Uh, for, for my purposes right now, I'll just pick the easiest and shortest one. We're going to do responsive prayer two on page 285. And so on page 285, this is just a three-page service. It will not take long uh, to get through, and uh, it will be very familiar. There are familiar items such as the Lord's Prayer, the Apostles' Creed, uh, Luther's morning or evening prayer, depending on which time of day you want to do this. So all of these should be fairly familiar elements uh, to your family, and certainly the more you do these things, the more they will become familiar. So we're going to do responsive prayer to page 285 as our prayer office, our daily office service. And then the next thing I want you to do is pick a hymn. Um, pick a hymn for that day. Now, we can use a hymn that we have used in, in church the past Sunday, or we can just, you know, ask your family, what is your favorite hymn? That might be a good way to start things off, you know, the... the the family might become more engaged in this if they have some ownership, if they are able to pick what they are singing. So ask the kids, what hymn do you want to sing today? Uh, what, what is your favorite hymn? Let's do that one. Um, and that, that can be a good way to springboard on into doing this. Um, the next thing I have for you is to pick a psalm for the day. We'll show you the psalms here in a second. The next thing you'll want to look at is what is your reading going to be for the day? Now, you can do a reading or you can do multiple readings. You might want to do an Old Testament and a New Testament reading, an epistle reading, a New Testament reading. Um, again, whatever you do, this is your devotional service. You get to put it together. You get to decide. Uh, we can follow the lectionaries that we have followed uh, in church. Or once again, this is another plug for this particular uh, resource. 
the treasury of daily prayer, which gives you your daily readings that you can uh, you can use or at least select from. And once again, this is available on a phone app called Pray Now. Uh, it's a lot cheaper on the app, and it's just as easy to use. It is just as friendly to the user. So uh, once again, I can't encourage this resource enough. And then um, I would advise closing with another hymn, or you might want to uh, sing the last stanza of the hymn that you picked at the beginning. Uh, maybe one hymn per day was, is, is enough for you, but if you want to add another hymn, that is perfectly acceptable too. These, this is kind of the template that I have set up for us to work with. Uh, now certainly, and this is something I really want to stress, that whatever you do, allow time for discussion and questions. You know, actually stop and ask your kids, you know, after the reading, do, do you understand that? Do you understand what Jesus did here? Do you understand what this uh, story is about? Do you understand what is going on here? That is a perfect opportunity for you to engage in conversation. It's something that we don't always get the opportunity to do in the church. As the pastor is preaching, as the pastor is reading, uh, we don't get a chance necessarily to ask questions and to uh, discuss these things. This is a perfect opportunity for you in the home to have those discussions. And by all means, if there is a question that you do not know the answer to, there is no shame in telling your children, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Let's ask Pastor Young. And I promise you that I am not too busy to answer your questions. That would absolutely make my day to have a family give me a call and say, hey, Pastor Young, we were doing family devotions and this question came up. Can you help us? And... You know, there might be times when you ask me a question and I might have to say, I don't know, but I will do my best to help you out and I will look things up. I have some resources perhaps that you do not have where I can study things in ways that, uh, that you don't have readily available to you. So please give me a call. Give your pastor a call. Ask for help with this if discussion questions come up that you do not have answers to. But quite honestly, the worst thing you could do is make something up that turns out to be very wrong. Because if, if you teach your kids something that turns out to be wrong, um, we might lose their trust in the future as we are continuing to develop their faith. So please uh, take advantage of your resources. Call your pastor. Uh, I would be happy to help you through this. So let's uh, look at an example of this. Next week, we have... Uh, a couple things going on. Uh, there is, on Thursday, May 21st, is Ascension Day. That is 40 days after Easter. We always celebrate Ascension Day. But also on May 21st, it happens to be a commemoration. So what is a commemoration? Well, let's look at our hymnal and see what these commemorations are all about. Uh, we turn to the front of the hymnal, and we have this section called The Church Year. And this is all of the Sundays and seasons within the church year. Um, you might recognize in church how we change the colors of the altar, of the pyramids, of the lectern and the pulpit. Uh, the pastor changes the color on his stole. And all of this has to do with the seasons of the church year. I'm sure many of you probably already knew that. Uh, right now, we are still in the Easter season, but the Easter season is quickly coming to a close. We've only got a couple more uh, weeks of Easter, and then we get into what is known as the time of the church, or the season after Pentecost. And that season is uh, largely the green season. Uh, so we are now in the white season. We're going into the green season. But you see that all of these Sundays and seasons... Uh, they are set throughout the church year, but other than, oh, per, for instance, Christmas Day, uh, for the most part, a lot of these uh, days do not have specific dates attached to them because the church year, uh, in large part, changes uh, dates every year. Now, Christmas is always on December 25th. Christmas Eve is always on December 24th. But Ash Wednesday is not always on the same date. That changes from uh, year to year. And so 
we have not spelled out dates here, but we have spelled out uh, seasons and how to follow along with those seasons as they differ from year to year. Then on the next page, we do have specific dates. We have what's called feasts and festivals. And some of these the church will, will recognize and the church will celebrate. And some of these might be very good opportunities for you to pay attention to in the home and celebrate in the home. And some of these we might celebrate if they happen to come upon a Sunday. Uh, we might acknowledge these things. We might even focus on them if they take place on a Sunday. But typically, a lot of these things might uh, escape us if we're not paying attention to this in our hymnal. And this is perfect for daily use. These are all specific days that we can look at. But then we also have commemorations. These are not days that uh, we are encouraged as the church to celebrate with a worship service and they probably won't make it even if they fall on a Sunday they probably won't get much mention uh, in our church but they are things of significance in our church and so we see on May 21st we have not only Ascension Day this year but on May 21st we celebrate Christian ruler Emperor Constantine and also his mother Helena and so uh, that is a, a special commemoration and uh, it's an interesting one if you would like to know more information about any of the people that we are commemorating here in this uh, in this section of our hymnal I encourage you go to go to lcms.org and then when you do that you can go to the page that that says commemorations and from there you can click on any of the dates there and uh, a, a short paragraph will come up showing you something about that particular person and what they contributed to the Christian church as a whole. Here is uh, Constantine and it talks about his contributions to the church as he essentially legalized Christianity and set the people free to worship their God as they chose. And so we certainly want to recognize that and celebrate that. And if you are doing family devotions on Thursday, May 21st, it's not bad at all to read that paragraph and remember what this man did in history uh, to help the Christian church. That is certainly not only a good history lesson, but also a good faith lesson for us to thank God for our rulers who give us the freedoms that we have in our society today, who give us the freedom to practice our religion, who give us the freedom to assemble and to pray together. And so all of that can be a wonderful way to uh, give you a discussion point for your family devotion to talk about not only something that happened in history, but what it means to our daily lives. So since this is the occasion of Ascension Day next week, let's plan a service based on Ascension Day. Just real quick, I'll show you kind of how this can look. Um, well, the first thing we want to do is look in our hymnal at Ascension Day hymns. So once again, the first half of the hymn section uh, kind of goes through these seasons. We have Lent and then Easter. And then after Easter will be the Ascension season, because this is the chronology of how things work. And then after Ascension comes the Pentecost season, and so forth. So here we are in the Ascension hymns. It starts at hymn 491 and goes through hymn 495. And so we've only got a few hymns to choose from there. And I'm going to pick as my first hymn, hymn 493, a hymn of glory let us sing, because this is a familiar tune to me and probably to you as well. Uh, this is the one with the wonderful alleluias in it. So even if your children cannot sing anything else in here, if your children are not of reading age yet, uh, they can certainly learn the alleluias and sing those alleluias with you. A hymn of glory let us sing, new hymns throughout the world shall ring. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So teach them those alleluias and they can chime in with those and, uh, and really belt them up. That'll be really fun, I think. So 
The next thing we want to do is pick a psalm. Now, I happen to know, uh, based on this particular resource, I have, I have this for the church. This is a hymn selection guide for each Sunday of the year. Uh, this, this is something that we as pastors use to cheat as we are planning services. Uh, each of these um, pages has a different day of the church year, a different Sunday, and then uh, it gives you the readings of that day and the hymns that they suggest for that particular Sunday. Uh, sometimes I use this very faithfully, sometimes I pick my own, but uh, usually I use this as a guide and it's very helpful. Um, I happen to know that for Ascension Day, because I have this resource, the psalm for the day is Psalm 47. And so I will use Psalm 47 as our psalm for the day. Now, the psalms are all in the front of the hymnal. And so you can look up the psalm for the day by looking up, like in this case, Psalm 47. Now, you will notice... Uh, just on this page, we have Psalm 47, Psalm 48, and Psalm 50. What happened to Psalm 49? Where did it go? Why is Psalm 49 not in our hymnal? Typically, the psalms that are in our hymnal are only the psalms that are assigned for a given Sundays. Uh, they do not have all of the psalms in here, but only the psalms for the week. Uh, most of them are in here, but sadly, not all of them are in here. So if you're wondering why some psalms are missing, it is because it is designed uh, for use with the Sunday service, but uh, that, that shouldn't keep you from reading these psalms other days. If you really want to read Psalm 49, by all means, go get your Bible and read Psalm 49 if you feel like that got left out. But our, our psalm for this day is Psalm 47. Clap your hands, all peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord the Most High is to be feared, a great king over all the earth. Now, as you are doing this with your family, that could be kind of fun. Uh, to You know, when it says clap your hands, tell your kids, clap your hands. Let's go. Uh, shout to God with joy, with songs of joy. With uh, Let the kids shout. Okay, all of this. Uh, things that may not be acceptable in church, may not be tolerated, are certainly acceptable and encouraged within your home. Make this uh, your time to, to share this faith with your kids, with your families. Um, next thing you want to do is pick a reading for the day. Once again, I happen to know that the reading for Ascension Day, at least in Series A that we are in right now, is Luke 24, 44 to 53. So that will be our reading for our devotional time. We'll read through that and discuss what that means. What happened? What, what did the disciples see when Jesus ascended into heaven? Uh, what might that have looked like? You know, you might talk to your kids about, you know, when they've seen a, a balloon, a, a helium balloon fly away. And how you can see it, you can see it, you can see it until you can't see it anymore. And maybe that's what the ascension looked like. Uh, that Jesus has ascended. He has gone away, but he is still present with us. He is still here with us because he has promised that he is with us always, even to the end of the age. So even though he looks like he has gone away, he is sitting at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, and he is there interceding for us and advocating for us, and he is there still being our Christ. And so you can talk to your kids about what all that means and what all that might have looked like. And then close with another hymn. And again, maybe pick a hymn that uh, has to do with that day. We might pick another Ascension Day hymn, or we might pick a hymn that is familiar to your kids or ask them to make a request. Uh, what hymns do you want to sing? If you would uh, like help singing the hymns, you can go to YouTube and almost any hymn, not all, but almost any hymn, you can type in the search. Uh, do, for instance, I want to do Beautiful Savior, hymn 537. So I can do a, a YouTube search on Lutheran Service Book, LSB 537, or in this case, I could probably just do Beautiful Savior. And there is probably somewhere on YouTube an organist playing a version of, of this hymn that you can sing along to. And that can be quite wonderful, be a nice way to bring music into your home. 
And so this is really, it's really this simple. It's not hard at all. Just plug these pieces in and, uh, and use the tools that we have in our hymnal. I did not talk about the prayers, so we do want to make sure we get those in. Um, you, you can certainly pray, like I said before, anything that you want to pray with your family, whether it is from the heart, whether it is the Lord's Prayer, Luther's morning prayer, evening prayer, all of that would be certainly acceptable. But you can also look at these prayers starting on page 305 and uh, maybe even more specifically looking at uh, those prayers starting on 315, home and family. And these all might be uh, very good for you as well. Uh, look at those prayers, see if any of them seem especially relevant for where you are at and what's going on in your family life on that particular day. Uh, that can be very, a very helpful place to go to look for prayers uh, to help you pray with your family. So again, all of these tools are here. This is all available to you to help construct your family worship life, your family devotional life. Uh, it is a wonderful resource. Next week, what we will do is I will invite you into the Young House and show you what this can look like, what this... Uh, what this might look like, and also, um, you know, show you that nobody does this perfectly. Uh, there will be uh, plenty of imperfections to show you as well. But once again, like I said last week, most of us are not very good at this. And so anything more that you can do is probably more than you were doing before. And that should be encouraged. So let me know if you have any questions. Please give me a call if you have any questions about how to instill this in your family life. And I look forward to learning with you as we go through this. We will see you next week. God's blessings to you.